Good evening. evening. Welcome to one and all. Welcome in the name of our Lord Jesus. Uh, We continue on with our journey to Calvary this evening, uh, and we follow the order of service, the compline order of worship for the this evening if you didn't pick one up i believe they're on the table back there Uh, we will follow that to guide the path of our worship tonight let's begin with the opening responses there then the lord almighty grant us a quiet night and peace at last it is good to give thanks to the lord to sing praise to your name to herald your love in the morning. At the close of day. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, our Savior, we come before you again this evening asking for your blessings upon us. Lord, we ask that you would speak to our hearts through the powerful word which, we, which you have given to us. Lord, help us to, to ponder these crucial hours of Lent and to, to see the never-failing love which you have shown to us and to all of the world. Uh, Lord, send your Holy Spirit to guide us and bless us according to your promise. Lord, we pray this all in your holy name. Amen. Let's join together then in the singing of our opening hymn, hymn 121, Jesus Grant That Balm and Healing, hymn 121.
Please stand. We continue on the top of page two with our confession of sins. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and of one another. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you in our thoughts, in our words, in our deeds, and in all the good we have failed to do. Forgive us in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Deliver and restore us that we may rest in peace. By the mercy of God, we are redeemed by Jesus Christ, and in him we are forgiven. Let us rest in his peace until the rising of the sun, when we shall serve him in newness of life. Amen. The congregation may be seated. We continue with our psalm for this evening. It is Psalm 143. You find this on page 118 in the front part of the hymnal. Let's sing together Psalm 143. Let us pray. Lord God, our refuge and fortress, your faithfulness has protected us throughout this day. Now send your holy angels to guard us from danger throughout this night. Give us peaceful rest, free from fear, that we may awake refreshed to serve you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Amen. 
This evening we hear uh, the next portion of Matthew's gospel. You could call this our gospel reading for the evening uh, from Matthew chapter 26. Uh, We pick it up here at verse 57. So if you'll give me a moment to, hopefully I can push, push the right buttons on this equipment. Perhaps it would work best if we could dim the the lights, please. No, I can't see the buttons. (laughs) Okay, good. you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, Spoken blasphemy! Why do we need any more witnesses? Look! Now you have heard the blasphemy! What do you think? He's worthy of death. They answered. 
Then they spit in his face and struck him with their fists. Others slapped him and said, Prophesy to us, Christ. Who hit you? Now Peter was sitting out in the courtyard, and a servant girl came to him. You also were with Jesus of Galilee, she said. But he denied it before them all. I don't know what you're talking about, he said. Then he went out to the gateway where another girl saw him and said to the people there, This fellow was with Jesus of Nazareth. He denied it again with an oath. I don't know the man. After a little while, those standing there went up to Peter and said, Surely you are one of them, for your accent gives you away. Then he began to call down curses on himself, and he swore to them, I don't know the man! Immediately, a rooster crowed. Then Peter remembered the word Jesus had spoken. Before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. He went outside and wept bitterly. Early in the morning, all the chief priests and the elders of the people came to the decision to put Jesus to death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. Again, I think we'll take uh, perhaps some time if you have uh, uh, questions or comments on uh, our gospel lesson for this evening at the end of the service. Uh, perhaps that will work better. So if you have thoughts or comments, uh, we just keep them in mind if you would, please. Let's continue then with the responses uh, about the middle of page three of your service folder. This is the gospel of our Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Into your hands I commend my spirit. Into your hands I commend my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, God of truth. Into your hands I commend my spirit. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Into your hands I commend my spirit. Let's join together then in the singing of our next hymn, hymn 116, In the Hour of Trial, hymn 116. <laughs>
Peace to you and comfort in the name of Jesus Christ, our loving Lord and Savior. Amen. The word of God for a special focus this evening is recorded for us by the evangelist Luke. This is in chapter 22, uh, verse 53. Jesus is speaking to that arresting crowd who came to him there in the Garden of Gethsemane. Every day I was with you in the temple courts, and you did not lay a hand on me. But this is your hour when darkness reigns. This is the word of our Lord. Let's bow our heads in prayer. O Holy Spirit, continue to be with us and to guide our hearts and our minds. Let us ponder again these great truths of our Savior's love for us so that our faith might be strengthened and that we might be further equipped to serve you in praise and thanksgiving. Lord, we pray this all in Jesus' name, amen. In the name of that one that Isaiah, the Old Testament prophet, refers to as the suffering servant of the Lord, fellow people of God. The very first verse of Holy Scripture tells us, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty, darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God hovered over the waters. Darkness, Moses writes about. The Hebrew word is choshech. It even sounds rather sinister. Darkness was there. But then the very next verse is the truth about God simply speaking the word, simply willing it to happen, let there be light, and the power of God's word makes it happen. And there was light. Now, I don't think it's any coincidence that Jesus, in the New Testament times, after he had taken on human flesh, after he had entered into his own creation, made that statement, one of those great I am statements that uh, John especially records for us, when he said, I am the light of the world. You know, at one time in the world, as God was beginning the creation, there was darkness. Then God created light, and here is the one who is light himself. I am the light of the world. Well, as we travel back to the Garden of Gethsemane, we need to recognize that there was, there was darkness in the sky and there was darkness all around. Uh, there in the Garden of Gethsemane, oh, maybe, maybe the moon might have been shining. After all, it was Passover time. That means it was the time of the full moon. But, but maybe even then, the, maybe there were clouds covering and obscuring even the, the light of the moon. Uh, but, but there was darkness there in the, the Garden of Gethsemane. And Jesus addressed that arresting crowd. Uh, and he, had, he was noting that, that he had been in the temple court every day. He had been there constantly preaching and teaching the word of the Lord and none of them did a thing about it. Nobody lifted a finger against him. But now, under the cover of darkness, this arresting crowd comes out to take him captive. And they're armed to the teeth. They have swords and clubs and all kinds of things like that. Some of them are, are, as I've mentioned in other weeks, uh, you know, Roman soldiers. Some are are the temple police and, and others are just in the crowd and probably grabbed whatever weapon they could. Uh, But here they come to arrest him, armed to the teeth, treating him like he's some kind of you know, no, notorious terrorist, somebody who is, who is a deadly enemy, and that's how they come against him. And Jesus says to them, but this is your hour when 
darkness reigns. Now we could translate that here, the power of darkness, that power of darkness all around. And so this evening we want to, to look again at one of those, those crucial hours of Lent and the hour that we look at this evening is the darkening hour. And the first thing that we see here is that the, the darkness deepens as the, the prince of darkness rages. Well, when, when Jesus was with his disciples there in the upper room uh, in Jerusalem celebrating the Passover, Jesus had indicated uh, to Judas that he knew what Judas had planned. He knew already what, what Judas had plotted together with, with his enemies. And uh, he indicated that to Judas when he gave him that, that piece of bread that had been dipped in the in the. Uh, the dish in the middle, probably. And then John writes for us there, as soon as Judas took the bread, Satan entered into him. Just ponder that for a moment. Satan entered into him. It just kind of sends a, a shiver down our spine, doesn't it? Satan entered into him, and there's this bit of a conversation between Jesus and Judas, and then John writes in verse 30, as soon as Judas had taken the bread, he went out, and it was night. Darkness. Darkness there. And now they're in that darkness in, in the, the Garden of Gethsemane, and Jesus says that to the arresting crowd. Now, uh, this is your hour when darkness reigns. And it's not only th their time of, of darkness and, and they are reigning when seemingly, it seems as though they are in charge, this arresting crowd who is, has come out to, to capture him. Uh, but it appears even as though the, the prince of darkness is getting his way. You know, that, that these, these arresting crowd people are going to, to stand in the way of Jesus completing his mission, that the devil uh, is, is going to have his way. And, and probably as, as never before, the, the, the hordes of hell are attacking Jesus, uh, trying to, to dissuade him from the path of, of being the, the redeemer and savior of the world. It was the devil, it was the devil who was motivating Judas. Uh, the devil entered into him, the scriptures tell us here. It was the devil who was, was working in the hearts and lives of, of those uh, chief priests and teachers of the law and, and all those who had set themselves in, in opposition against Jesus. Uh, I think we probably even have to say that it was, it was the devil who was instigating the apostle Peter to do what he did, to, uh, you know, thinking, probably thinking he was doing the right thing, uh, trying, to, trying to defend his savior, uh, misguided though he was, he, he starts swinging his sword. You know, probably, I have to think, maybe he was trying to make up for what had happened earlier. You know, Jesus said there in Gethsemane, watch and pray, and he and all of the other disciples failed. They went to sleep. And maybe he thought, well, now I'm awake. Now I'm really gonna step up to the plate. Now I'm really going to do something significant. And he starts swinging his sword, and uh, apparently rather misguided. And uh, one of the servants of the high priest, his name is Malchus, his ear is lying in the dirt because Peter's been swinging his sword. And what does Jesus do? Jesus stops the violence immediately. Notice that. You know, Jesus is not going to allow this to go on. He's not going to allow this to, to develop into some kind of a, a riot. Think what people could have said then if he would have let that happen. Uh, people would have maybe said, well, it's a good thing that the, the Roman soldiers and the temple police were there. This riot developed out in the Garden of Gethsemane. Did you hear about that? Jesus wouldn't let that happen. That was, that was not God's way. That was not God's plan. 
And so Jesus even heals Malchus's ear and restores that. Probably, at least as far as we know from Scripture, the last miracle that Jesus performed while he was still in his humiliation, before that time when he was exalted again in glory. So Jesus heals the man. Even though he was there with that arresting crowd, he was a servant, a servant of of the high priest. He was there. Well, that's... You know, that's how Peter reacted. And, and I suppose the other disciples were, were maybe cheering him on. And it makes me wonder what I would have done if I would have been there. I wonder what you would have done if you had been there. But now Jesus says, darkness reigns. At least for now, darkness reigns. And, and God is using even that. God is even going to use that to accomplish his saving purposes. But we see that the darkness deepens as as the prince of darkness rages. But at the same time, we see that the, the lamp of the Lord's love, it burns undiminished as the, the prince of life presses on here. Jesus didn't need Peter to be swinging a sword. He didn't need that puny power that that Peter had there. (laughs) He even even says, he stops him from doing that, and he goes and says, don't you know I can speak to my heavenly Father, and he'll send 12 legions of angels? A legion back in those days was 6,000 soldiers. 12 legions of angels. If I did my math right, that's 72,000 angels. One would have done the job. One could have done the job. Jesus didn't even need any angels. But what Jesus really needed, what he needed was to go forward to press on in this work that his heavenly father had sent him to do and to bring to completion. And so Jesus, even though he is in control of all things, and he showed that over and over and over again, even even as this crowd comes to take him captive, they do not take him captive. They do not do that. Instead, Jesus gives himself over to them. Jesus allows them, even though he has the power to stop this in its tracks, Jesus allows this to go forward. He allows them to to bind him, but, but we know it was not those ropes that held Jesus there. It was his amazing love for each one of us sinners. You know, we sang that hymn, I believe it was last week. What wondrous love is this? You know, what wondrous love is this that Jesus, the the one who is the Lord of life, the one who is the Lord of light, allows this to happen because this is the will of his heavenly Father. This is the plan that the heavenly Father has determined for him. It's for him to, to go through this darkening hour when it appears at least that darkness reigns because he was doing that for us. And Jesus was pressing on, he was pressing on to carry out and finish that work of redemption which the next day would take him to the cross at the hill of Calvary where he again willingly, the one who is in total power, the one who is in total control, he willingly laid down his life He gave up his spirit, the the scriptures say, to, to make payment for the sins of the world so that we who were bound, bound in the chains of sin and headed for eternal destruction in hell might be delivered because of the payment that Jesus made for our sins there by completing his work of redemption. 
that lamp of the Lord's love continues to burn and to, to burn brightly as, as the prince of life, as the prince of light continues to press on to complete his mission. And so we, we learn from this darkening hour. We ponder this darkening hour. And, and ponder it, my friends, as though, as though you're hearing it for the first time. Ponder that amazing love which Jesus is showing to us. Ponder it and proclaim it boldly. Because Jesus did that for you and for me to win our redemption. The one who is truly the Lord of life was carrying this out, carrying his mission out uh, fully and completely, winning the victory and overcoming the powers of darkness for you and for me. So may that message continue to give peace and and confidence to our hearts. May it bring that quiet joy that, that only Jesus' forgiveness can give to us as we ponder that darkening hour. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us pray. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Listen to my cry. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadows of your wings. In righteousness I shall see you. When I wait, your presence will give me joy. O God, our Father, by your mercy and might, the world turns safely into darkness and returns again to light. We place into your hands our unfinished tasks, our unsolved problems, and our unfulfilled hopes, knowing that only what you bless will prosper. To your great love and protection, we commit each other and all those we love and all of our fellow Christians around the world, especially those in dangerous situations, knowing that you alone are our sure defender. We pray to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let's join together then in the singing of our next hymn, hymn 122, Sing My Tongue, The Glorious Battle, hymn 122.
Please stand now as we join together and pray the prayer which Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive with joy in your hearts the blessing of our Lord, the almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Bless and keep us. Amen. Please be seated once again as we join in our closing hymn, hymn 587, Now Rest Beneath Night's Shadow, hymn 587. Good evening. Good to be with you here again this evening. Uh, if you would, please, uh, well, again, uh, welcome especially to uh, those joining us on the live stream and on television broadcasts and YouTube and things like that. Good to have you with us as, as well. Uh, if you would, please return the order of service um, as you leave here this evening. Uh, as you Undoubtedly noticed, we did the, the video presentation of Matthew's Gospel quite a bit differently this evening, uh, different equipment and so forth. Um, I think we could have improved the sound quality if we, uh, next time if we do this, we'll have to uh, hook it directly into the sound system and so forth. So, uh, but anyway, if you have any thoughts about how this worked or if the, if the screen is better, especially as the setting sun is uh, streaming through the windows and things like that. Uh, but if you have thoughts or comments on what works the best, uh, please share that uh, with me. 
Uh, we also, I believe, we are doing refreshments. Is that the case? Right? Okay. So there, there are refreshments and a time for fellowship here this evening. Um, so why don't we join together in the table prayers before we uh, partake of that. Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest, and let these gifts to us be blessed. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Amen. 